Hey, it's Justin Brown here from Primal Video. Recently, we did a video talking about the best camera apps on iOS, and we narrowed it down to three. They were Movie Pro, Kinematic, and Filmic Pro. In this video, we're gonna take a look at Kinematic and show you step-by-step -step how you can set it up to get the best results with your videos. Now, it's important to note here that this isn't a full review, and it's also not gonna cover off every feature in the app. There's way too many, but we're gonna take you through step-by-step -step how you can set up Kinematic for the best results for video. Now, before we jump into it, the biggest reason that you want to be using a third party or aftermarket camera app for creating your videos is so that you get full control over the camera and get the most out of the camera that's in your device. So having the ability to lock down things like the exposure, so the brightness or the focus, really gives you full control instead of relying on the camera's judgment as to whether to brighten the shot when it may or may not need it or to change the focus when you're in the middle of recording. So by giving the power back to you, or by you taking the power back by using one of these apps, you'll get full control and be able to lock everything down so that it looks the way you want, not how the phone thinks it should look. So we'll be taking you through step by step so that you don't get overwhelmed with all the features and the settings that are in the app and show you the ones that you need to lock everything down for the best results. All right, so we're here in Kinematic. The first thing you wanna do is to lock down all of your settings. So if we come down the bottom here to settings and you wanna pick your video resolution. So the highest resolution on this iPhone 6 is 1080p. So select the highest resolution that you can for your phone. Next up, you wanna pick your frame rate. If you're in Australia or the UK, then you'll wanna be on 25 frames per second. If you're in the US, then you wanna be 30 frames per second. Now it is important that you match the frame rate with the region of the world that you're filming in so that you're gonna reduce things like any flickering in your video from the lights that you might be using. So 25 frames per second in Australia and the UK, 30 frames per second in the US. Now you do also have the option here to adjust that and to shoot at higher frame rates, like 50 frames per second or 60 frames per second for a smoother image look, if that's what you're after. Or you can also kick into slow motion, which is 120 frames per second or 240. So if you're after slow motion, then pick one of those higher frame rates. But for most videos, you should be picking 25 or 30. Now audio gain here is the volume boost that you can have for your microphone. So you'll wanna make sure that the setting below it, monitor audio is on, so that when you're recording you can see your audio and, and see the level that it's coming in at. If it's too quiet, then you can boost it up using the audio gain slider. For now, we'll just leave that as default. So we keep coming up, we get to choose our audio encoding or our audio quality settings. So the two primary settings here are 44.1 kilohertz or 48 kilohertz. And that's in regards to the quality of the audio that you're recording. Now, once you've picked 44 or 48, then you get to choose the compression that's applied to it. So this app gives you the choice of a bit depth of 16 or 32. Now, the higher the number, the higher the quality, the larger the file size. So I'd suggest that you leave this at its default, which is the maximum 48 kilohertz, uncompressed with a bit depth of 32. So as we keep coming down through the settings here, I'd suggest that you turn your mat to none. You can see that when we select to none, that we're losing those bars that were on the top and the bottom that you can see there now. So I set that to none. And as you can see, the more that we scroll down here, there's a lot more settings that you can tweak and play around with for your own personal preference, but the critical ones we've already done. Turning off your mat, your audio encoding, your frame rate, and your resolution are the key settings that you need to get right here. So we'll come back out of that now. We'll make sure that we're up the top here. So the first setting that we wanna lock down here is the exposure. So we'll come up to AE, and here we get the choice of ISO which is currently set to 40, and we've got a shutter speed here of one over 25. Now we can press on that and we can swipe up and down or slide up and down. You can see that our numbers are adjusting here. Now for your shutter speeds here, if you're in Australia or the UK, once again, I'd recommend that you're using 50. So our frame rate was set to 25. Our shutter speed should be set to twice that, which is 50. So that way we're not getting any motion blur in our filming. Now, if you're in the US, then you'll want to set this to one over 60. Oops. Because the frame rate that we recommended was 30, so twice that is 60. 
So 50 and 60 are the lowest numbers that you'll wanna set your shutter speed to. So now that we've locked down our shutter speed, we can change the brightness of our overall shot by using the ISO. So if we touch on that now, we can use this slider to brighten and darken our shot. So the higher the number, the brighter the shot, the lower the number, the darker the shot. So it's a matter of going through here now to get the brightness that we're after. Probably somewhere around 100. Now, if you were outdoors filming in really bright conditions and you had your shutter set to one over 50 or one over 60, and you were adjusting your ISO down to the lowest number to darken off your shot, if it wasn't dark enough, if your shot was still really bright, then you can increase your shutter speed to make the overall shot darker. So if we brighten our ISO back up now, somewhere around 100, then our shot is looking pretty good. The next setting we wanna lock down here is the white balance. That's the actual color tone of our shot. So if we press on white balance here, I'll scroll up. You can see we've got the choice of auto and we've got some presets here. So if we change these, we'll see them change in our shot. So it's making slight different color adjustments to match different lights that are in your scene. And you can see that it's updating the Kelvin color temperature there as well, based off these presets. So here you've just got to match the white balance with the lights that are used in your scene or the preset that matches the color or the look of the video that you like to capture. So the next setting we need to lock down is the focus point. So you'll see that if I bring my hand in here, then the phone will focus on my hand. If I move it away, it'll focus back on the background. Now that's one thing you definitely don't want to have changing while you're recording your videos. So the easiest way to lock this down is to let the app focus on the area that you want to be in focus and then to hit the AF button to lock it there and to hold it there. So if we let that focus on my hand now, say we want to hold that there, we'll just press the AF button and our focus is locked. Now if we want to make any further adjustments to that focus, then we can adjust the focus using this slider up and down to change our focus point. And when we let go, our focus is locked in at that point. And the last setting that you'll want to check is whether you've got image stabilization on or off. So whether you use this or not will really depend if you're going to be filming on a tripod or if you're handheld or if there's movement in your filming. If there's any movement in your filming or you're gonna be walking around with your phone, then I would suggest to leave the stabilizer on. It will make your videos smoother. If you're gonna be filming on a tripod like we are here, then I would suggest that you turn that off. Now, once you've got everything set up, if you'd like to save this as a preset, then you can come down to the bottom here to preset and choose save current configuration as preset. And you can give it a name. Let's just call it JB. Done. And hit the tick. And now we've got a preset in there that we can load next time so that we don't have to manually set everything up again. It's also a really good idea to check your audio levels. You can see the audio bars at the top that are moving as I'm talking here now. You wanna make sure that your audio bars aren't going into the red. So looking at this audio meter here, the audio for me is a bit quiet. So we can come back down here into settings and we've got audio gain, we can boost that up. So as we boost that up, let's go to 53. We can see our audio bars at the top there. They're much louder now. So I'm much louder in this recording. So you wanna set it to the point where you are going up towards the red, but not going into the red. Anything in the red will be distorted audio and you don't want that. Now, one last tip before you start recording your videos, I suggest that you record a really short 15 to 20 second clip, testing your audio, testing your video, making sure everything is how you want it before you go and record your full videos. So there you have it, that's how you can set up and use Kinematic on your iOS device for video. If you found this video helpful, make sure you click that subscribe button if you haven't already and give the video a thumbs up. And linked on screen now is another video taking you through step by step how you can create professional videos with your iPhone. I'll see you soon.